Hello, and welcome to Tuckle Steve's Workbench. Today, we have a special guest with us, and her name is Pukatarian. We call her Pookie for short. She's my faithful, wonderful companion doggy, and she's a Jack Russell Terrier, and she's a sweet, sweet girl. And so she wanted to be in the movie, and by wondering what in the world I was doing in here, and so I said, oh, okay, well, you'll just come on in and you'll be able to see what's going on, won't you? Yeah, you like to go, don't you? You like to go places, don't you? Yes, you do. And so today, she's going to be starring with the beige in color, Western Electric, model 236G, three-slot coin telephone. And this phone was used in... Uh, businesses and public facilities where the public would, would be and they, if they needed to make a phone call they would go up to what was called a pay phone, you might have seen them uh, I was driving by the post office in our town the other day and there's one right in front of the post office but it is a single slot coin telephone which were replaced these guys in the 1970s these are real workhorses, they, they were really good phones and what would happen is that if I wanted to make a call Usually the instruction card, which is missing from the card holder at the top right here, would say, go ahead and make, let's say, 10 cents for a local call. And if it was a long distance call, then it would be indicated that you needed to add more money from the operator that would come on the line. You would lift the handset, you would just read the instructions or just put it to your ear. Wait, read instructions before dialing. You put it to your ear, you would have dial tone. And then you would dial on the finger wheel your telephone number, and if you notice, it breaks dial tone. If I hang up, there's dial tone back again. I'll get into that a little later in the video. The phone is marked on the back side of the telephone. Uh, II, or 11, however you want to look at it, dash 62, which means the second quarter of 1962 is when the phone was manufactured by Western Electric. The end, there has some parts on the inside of it. They consist of a back plate. Let's go over the parts. Three components: back plate, top housing, lower housing. Okay. The top housing removes this way because it's a 10H lock down here that I do not have a key to. That locks the upper housing to the lower housing. There are three screws on the back plate. I'll show them to you in a minute. That the back plate would lift. Well, let me just show it to you. The screws are down here. And the back plate would lift this way, the upper housing forward, clearing the lock lip, and you would pull it up, and you would disconnect the 8-pin connector on, in, that connects the bottom housing to the top for the wiring issues. And you would uh, uh, remove the housing, the upper housing, and then you have the lower housing, which would be, uh, you could see the coin relay, which is a single relay, single winding relay, single coil. Single coil is desirable over the dual coil because there's problems with the dual coils. Okay, if you get a coin collector box from a gentleman on eBay that goes into great, great detail and spent much time explaining these telephones, he sells a coin um, controller that you hook up in series with the phone and you can use it put money in it and when you hang up the money will come back or it goes down into the coin box or whatever. This one does not have a coin box, it's got a coin box lid. It does not have a lock for the coin box because there, there just isn't one. And it doesn't have any of the keys if I didn't already say that. What it does have is it has a G1 type handset that has a cracks in the receiver cup. And they're not, they don't hurt at all when you put it to your ear. You don't even know they're there. Um, but if that bothers you and you don't like that, I'll be happy to sell you a replacement handset, which is a G1 type handset. It says G3 on it, honestly. And it's the type with the single hole so that you can go ahead and put your armored handset cord, replace your, your cord in there, and it uh, doesn't have a crack. So you can open it, unscrew them. You can't unscrew these because they're glued down with some sort of ultra nuclear glue that they should have marketed with the glue manufacturer and they did that for uh, vandalism purposes 
and the yeah the the phone has some scratches on the sides got some scratches over here on the lower housing this has been all uh, cleaned for the coin return shoot the switch hook chrome has been cleaned the top has been cleaned um, it's basically been gone over as far as I could get with cleaning it now comes the point with using the telephone what I've done is the gentleman on eBay with sells the coin controller makes a remark that there are telephone hobbyists that well, how should I put this mess around with the inside wiring change things take things out nothing has been taken out of this phone this phone is all original the 401 uh, the 4010 B network is original in the upper housing all the wiring is exactly the way it should be and it's hooked up according to Bell system practice for this type model phone on the connectors that were indicated I don't have the sheet right in front of me I'm just gonna have to take my word for it I don't have the BSP right up right up front at least I don't think I do but I don't believe I do pardon me no I don't and with wiring it up I wired it so that the yellow black lead on the connector goes to the ground lead on the coin relay red green goes on tip and ring on the switch hook assembly leads okay so uh, which are Y and R to be quite honest with you that modular cord the handset cord retainer a clip was swung to the side the modular cord was added that was swung back again so that it's all the way it should be and the only thing additional it's got is a modular connector so make sure you have just your single line phone line on by red green okay no two lines this is not a two line phone second line is ground don't let it mess up your other lines that might be in your uh, wiring if there's any question about that get a competent telephone person to help you and I'm sure they can figure it out if they're competent if they can't figure it out get rid of them tell them to just get out now the phone as you can see or here break style tone you hang it up they got that come back so the phone does work and the phone has been thoroughly tested for call quality and the, all the calls are very clear oh and I forgot to tell you that the phone funny how that works right the phone does have a bell in it on incoming calls it does ring and so that you could tell when you're getting a phone call hello uh, no I can't take a poll right now no okay I'll take your poll all of the answers are no thank you for calling okay so telemarketers honestly so at the time it used to be let's say there was a lot of instances where somebody would walk up to it, put the read the instructions lift the phone okay what do I do now put my do coin in and it got stuck so there's a push lever that says push release coin release excuse me you push on it, it says push on it also and that would make the coin shoot in the back of the upper housing bin to get the coin unjarred the coin then would go down into what is called a hopper assembly that hopper assembly is dated dash 62 the coin relay unless I didn't say so is dated dash 67 and uh, it has the original gong assembly inside of it which simply the coin would hit the side of the bell as is going down uh, if you're going to use it as it is plug it in and not have a coin controller because this is not a bank if you put your coins in it'll go down through the coin chute and it'll end up into the co coin hopper uh, roughly around the uh, coin trigger mechanism that uh, interfaces with the coin relay mechanism and that would just build up coins to the point of where then it, you know it might affect the phone to some degree you know I don't know so keep in mind it doesn't have a coin box so it's not really a bank 
This is for somebody that wants this for a nostalgic purpose to hang it on the wall, put it in their home. After all, it is a wall phone. They didn't put it on the ceiling or the floor of the of the phone booths. They had phone booths back then, and uh, they hung it on the wall. So it is a wall phone, definitely, and uh, it uh, won't service as a bank. So if you think it's really nice or you happen to be one of those phone collectors that just hates it when people make something work that it shouldn't work that way. Well, I have put in a piece of thin mylar plastic that exists between the two contact points which shunt the dial tones. In other words, shunt the dialer. So, what would happen is that if you went to call it wouldn't break dial tone, it would still have dial tone until you put the coin in. Then the coin relay would come into play and you would be able to, you would sense that you dropped a coin into it and it would uh, open up the contacts so that you could dial. Uh, I've simply put that in there. It is marked pole. All you have to do is crack open the back, take the housing off by lifting it forward, up forward go to the side turn it around and there will be a white piece of paper that clearly says pole for factory it's clearly marked a third grader could figure it out so if that's what you want to do do it but keep in mind if you monkey with it you're not going to be able to necessarily make it work again if you don't know exactly where it was okay so as it is right now it's set up so that you can plug it into your phone line at home with the modular cord that's provided simply take the modular cord plug it into your modular jack and lo and behold now the phone will work and another issue I want to make it does have a, a phone number on the dial the finger wheel of the 213 area code 467-9899 that is a telephone number in Hollywood California at the time in the 213 area code and so you never know I'm simply gonna say it's beige it's uh, from Hollywood California that's where it was in service you never know might have been at the Brown Derby in a phone booth it might have been at the Whiskey A Go Go and maybe in the hallway going to the restrooms it might have been at um, the Sunset Grill, but it, it was in service at Hollywood somewhere in a business someplace or a restaurant. So it is a piece of Hollywood history if you want to look at it that way. If you want the number replaced with your phone number, I'll be happy to do that for again a separate invoice bill of seven dollars and fifty cents. We're going to put your phone number on it. But if you like it, that it has two and three four six seven nine eight nine nine, uh, that is not an active number even to this day. Then you can go ahead and uh, uh, keep it on there, and it's a nice piece of history and a little bit of uh, nostalgic uh, conversation piece. Put it in your man cave, hang it on your uh, wall in your living room or wherever. Maybe put it in the hallway, going to your restroom for that fact. Maybe you have a sunset grill. Who knows? And you can, as it is, plug it in and it will work. I'm going to say it again. After all, why do I do this? After all, if you're going to buy something, a telephone, and you want to get it, there are a group, of, two different groups of people. One group is I want it to be as original. I don't want your monkey with it. Well, if I would have done that, the dial wouldn't have worked. And another group of people is, or are, a, I want to buy a phone. I want it to work. If you buy a telephone, wouldn't you want it rewired from somebody that knows what they're doing? After all, I did work for the Bell system. was trained by the Bell system. Wouldn't you want to take it out of the box and plug it in and have it work? Doesn't that make any sense? If you don't, simply crack open, like I said before, the phone, take it apart, 
and pull the very clearly marked tab. You're going to have to turn it around to see pull, okay? All you have to do is turn around after you open it and just simply pull the tab. It's not hard. Honestly, even maybe even a first grader could do it, to tell you the truth. So when you do, it'll go back to shunting the dial and the dial won't work. You must have rotary post dial tone service from your local telephone service provider in order for this phone to dial, okay? So I want to thank you for watching another edition of Telco Steve's Workbench featuring Western Electric 236G. Cookie got nervous and anxious and everything else and we had to put her down uh, over into the hallway. <laughs> so she wants to say goodbye even though she's not here. And uh, we thank you for watching and hopefully you've learned a little bit of something. If not, you've got to see a great beige telephone. They're fairly rare from Western Electric 236G 1962 telephone. Thank you for watching. <laughs>